Rather than rush things, I'm going to do another section here on monopolies to make sure that you see exactly what's going on. And so, remember that marginal cost goes down exactly twice as steep as the demand curve does. And so we could actually write the equation of this gray line here as marginal revenue equals, let's go ahead and, and type this out here, the uh, marginal revenue equals 20 minus 4q because the slope is twice as steep as this demand curve, 20 minus 4q. But otherwise, it's a straight line and it starts at 20. And then the mon monopolist looks to see where marginal revenue, the gray, is equal to marginal cost, the purple. And that tells the monopolist where to stop producing. And we said that the price looks to be somewhere between 12 and 13 here and the quantity looks to be somewhere between three and four. Now we can actually solve to see exactly what that quantity and price is because we know that marginal revenue equals 20 minus 4q and marginal cost equals 2 plus q, right? What we used to call the supply curve, 2 plus q. And we can just solve to see where those two equal each other. Let's just do it real quick because it won't take but a, but a second. Set them equal to each other. 20 minus 4q equals 2 plus q. Take a minute to solve that and see what you get. All right, so if you solve those two, you'd get for the monopolist the quantity would be 3.6 gallons of milk and the price would be $12.80. And that's the price that's going to maximize the profit of this monopolist. Now, also what you want to do a lot of times with a monopolist is not just stop there. You want to go back and compare, okay, how have things changed exactly between having a monopolist and having a perfectly competitive market? And in order to do that, it's actually easiest if we just get rid of this marginal cost curve because otherwise it's just going to distract you. The only thing the marginal cost is used for is to tell the monopolist when to stop producing. Well, before I get rid of it, let's let's look at it a little bit more to make sure you understand why that's the quantity. If we look right over here, let me draw a little line right here to, uh, let's look at the fourth unit here. Let me draw a little line right there so that we can focus on it. I highlighted that in yellow. And right there, if the monopolist went ahead and produced that fourth unit, fourth gallon of milk, then all those units, all those little tenths of gallons after 3.6, the additional cost of production is higher than the additional revenue that's going to come in. Now if we look in our table here, for that fourth unit, the marginal revenue for the fourth unit, and this is assuming we can only produce whole numbers of units, is six dollars in additional revenue. But the that's assuming whole units. If we're actually looking at little continuous units, the marginal revenue is going to be more like around four when as we get close to that fourth unit and the marginal cost is going to be more like six. As we produce even more the additional cost will be around seven and the additional revenue for that little tenth or hundredth of a of a gallon will be closer to zero. And notice where this marginal revenue curve crosses the x-axis. This gives us an idea of approximately where when we keep producing additional revenue turns negative. Now in our discrete unit table here, the fifth unit brings in two more dollars in additional revenue, but then anything beyond that, the additional revenue is negative. In other words, our total revenue goes down beyond that point. And that's why the marginal revenue crosses the x-axis right at that point. So let's get rid of the marginal revenue and real quickly see what other things we can do with a monopolist. These are very common things you're asked to do. Now since the equilibrium price with a perfectly competitive firm would be eight dollars and the quantity would be six, where's the consumer surplus going to be now? Well the consumer surplus would be 
this area above the price that we solved and found would be um, twelve dollars and eighty cents so that yellow would be the new consumer surplus the producer surplus would be below the price but above the marginal cost curve here and so we could highlight that well, we'll put that in blue and then below here this would be the variable cost now what is this area to the right over here going to be well that used to be producer or consumer surplus in a case where we had a perfectly competitive business but now that triangle is going to be dead weight loss and that's one of the most common things we're interested in finding out for a monopoly is how much consumer and producers surplus will go away because what a monopolist always does is reduce the quantity and push the price up and so make sure you double check when you do a prediction of what will happen for a monopoly make sure your quantity is lower and make sure your price is higher otherwise you might be making a mistake and so I'll end here and we'll pick up looking at cost curves and see how things are a little bit different but mostly the same.